Welcome to Robin's Mobile Roost. Yesterday on my blog, I posted a card and I promised that I would um, soon make a video of it. <clears throat> so this is the card that I posted. It's uh, it's kind of a cool, I'm not even sure what to call it. I saw the um, this design on Jan Brown's um, video. So it opens up to a gift card inside. Isn't that cool? Or not a, a gift bag is what I should call it inside. And I thought it was the coolest thing. So I did make one. I did struggle a bit to get it created. So I thought I would do a, a video. So I'm going to make one today using some different colored paper to show you how, um, you know, you can switch it up to whatever paper you want. And make it a fun card. I would suggest starting with the um, designer series paper that you want to use and then design your card from there picking the colors and and your um, your belly band decoration. So let's flip the camera and get started creating. Let's first start assembling our layers. Now I have mine all cut here. I'm going to tell you the measurements and if you look at my blog, which I will give you a link to, they're also written there. So we're going to start with layer one has a piece of five and a quarter by one and a quarter cardstock. And then there is a five and one eighth by one and an eighth layer of designer series paper. And I would choose my cardstock layer by whichever designer series paper I'm working with. So in this instance, I have the um, Daffodil Afternoon. So I've chosen a, a Daffodil Delight and, and the black paper to match for this. And then my bag is going to be another design. Now our second layer is going to be again five and a quarter they're all five and a quarter long by one and three eighths and then all of our dsp here for these layers is five and an eighth and it's one and five eighths so we've got um the eighth inch difference to go around for the edge now our third layer is again five and a quarter by three and a quarter for the cardstock and then five and an eighth by three and an eighth for the designer series paper. And I just like to get these um, put together right away so that I know what pieces um, of random cardstock I have laying around. And then these are all ready and I won't like grab them and cut them. And then for our for our fourth layer, this is actually going to go on the, um, the card base. So I want the same color as my card base on top and then a contrasting color on the bottom. So I've chosen black and this is five and a quarter by three and three fourths. And then my daffodil piece is five and an eighth by three and five eighths. Now, if you chose a, um, a darker color for this, you'd probably need a white on it because this is where you're going to um, stamp or sign your name. So that's all of our layers, all ready to go on the card. Now the fun part. So let's pull in our trimmer and start working on our card base. Now our card base is 11 inches long. That's a whole piece of cardstock and five and a half inches wide. And then we're going to add a couple of score lines at it on it. However you want to say that we're going to score it at one and a half and five and a half. So this is basically going to give us a card that folds over like this, and like this. Oh, I'm missing a score. Okay, so we've got, nope, we're going this way. 
and a half. And then at nine. So then we'll have this card that opens, whoops, we'll have this card that opens with these flaps. And let's just go ahead and get our base layered up here. So this part is going to go together pretty easy. So if that was a bit confusing since I screwed up, we're going to score this again at one and a half, five and a half, and nine. And then it folds together, kind of tucks in. The big side folds back and this side folds on top of it. So then all of our layers, let's start on the inside. We're just gonna go ahead and add all of our layers. So you could do this card on its own without the bag inside, right? And you can also, um, Use the card this way, opening like this, or you could turn it opening like this. So you have, you have some options on how you use this card. And these pieces are just going to layer on all of our flaps. And then this one's going to be our front. So you do need to keep in mind how this is going to close so that you get this on the right side. So that's our base. And then our belly band is just going to wrap around. And if you want to score this, you can. I'm just going to fold it. Oh, and I apparently took the wrong, I bet I cut it the wrong way. So I had a measurement wrong. So make the belly band nine and a half, not seven and a half. And I will go back and change that on my blog as well. And that's just gonna wrap around. Now, let's work on our bag. Let's pull back in. Oh, I got stuff all over here. Pull back in our trimmer. Now, for the bag, this piece has been cut four inches by ten and a half. Now, I did trim off a half inch off the bottom of this because I wanted more of the um, the flowers to show but that'll depend on your designer series paper so then we are going to do some scoring now on this side the short the short side against here you're going to score it at a half inch and at three inches and I want the top fold to be this way so this is the bottom so when you're scoring the half inches on the bottom and that'll only make a difference if your designer series paper has an up and a down. Okay. And then at three inches. Because this is going to fold over on the top to kind of make a little liner. And then when we put the long side against the edge, we're going to score it at a half inch. And then four and a half. And these are gonna create our gussets here. Then we need five. And five and a half. And 
and then nine and a half. And 10, so I guess it's on the other side. Then we need to pull in a paper snips and we're going to cut out these corners. Let's see if I can, do they show up better on this side? They might. So I can show you, let's just give them a fold. So maybe they will show up a little better. So we need to remove the edges, right? The, the parts that would be in the way. And I like to cut them a little bit angled so that uh, you don't see that corner especially this one here. Oh, nope, is it that one? And these, you're gonna take off both of these, um, both of these little tabs. So all of the corners and then this middle part are gonna be gone. Ooh, I think I have glue on my scissors. Okay. There. So this is what it's going to look like once you have all the, the extra parts gone. So this is going to be our top right here. This is our bottom. So I'm just going to give these bottom edges just an extra little cut because I don't want them to show. They did on my first one and I didn't like that. I'm going to make sure I have this angle just a little bit more on the bottom edges. Okay. So when we put this together, I have to think about this one. This is going to go like this. This is going to go like this. And we'll just add that right there. So let's put a piece of tear and tape right here so that I can keep that in my head where it's going to go together. Just going to add that right there. Okay, now if I had if I had my hole punch with me here on the mobile roost, I would use that to make my um, handles, my, my little holes for my handles, but I do not have it with me. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take my, take your pick tool, and you could also um, measure this if you wanted to be um, precise about where your handles go, but I'm just going to take and make two holes and you'll notice I have it folded so the holes are going to be in the same place on the other side so there's one and if you know me I'm not very big on measuring things my stuff is always kind of cockeyed and crooky crook cro crooky yeah that's a good word okay so there's our holes for this side let's see can I see them on the other side yes now I really only need them big enough to get my my little um, trim through. So I'll just kind of work them until I get it big enough to get that trim through there. So we're gonna go in the one side out the other. And then 
let's start with this end. We will just take a glue dot to hold it down where we want it. And this is going to get covered up by our flap. So we'll just put a glue dot right there. And I just need a little bit through so that it holds. And then we'll decide how long we want our little, little screw to stick up because we want it the same on both sides, right? So just a hair below that. You can kind of use the flap as a guide for how far it is. And then we're just going to give this a snip. And grab another piece of tear and tape. And let's just put this across here. There's that side. Now, let's see if the holes are big enough. And repeat on this side. And looks about right. And don't do that. I think we'll be okay though. I wanted it just below the holes. And I wasn't getting it quite in the right spot. So then we just need to remove this to put our bag together. Well, there we go. So then this is going to fold. Let me double think this, right? Right on top of there, okay. okay. Isn't that cute? So now let's bring in our card. So now we're going to attach our gift bag to the inside of the card. So let's start by adding our tear and tape strip to one side. Actually, let's go ahead and put it on both sides right away. Okay, so we're just going to put it on the outside because it's going to fold kind of in and be adhered right on the score line. So let's go ahead and peel this off and put the first one down. So we're going to do it right on that score line, but not over it so that it doesn't interfere with the fold. And then let's just go ahead and peel off the second one and close the card on it. And there we go. It is all adhered. Ready to put a little gift in here. And then you can stamp or write your greeting over here. So then we just need to Let's see. Grab our belly band. Oh, that's our that's our bad one. Let's see. Here's our belly band. And let's give this a tape. Get that down. And then we need to make our decoration for on the front. 
let's pull in another piece of <clears throat> of the um, daffodil paper and I'm going to pull in the calming camellia stamp set I love the greetings on this one and we're going to use the it's the little things that make life great I think that would be perfect for this card so we're just going to ink it up with some um, memento tuxedo black And then we're going to die cut it with the um, beautiful dies. And then I'm going to do a black circle that's just a hair bigger. I will be back in just a second. Okay, here I have my, um, my die cut circle. And I don't know if you can see this. This circle from the beautiful dies, it actually cuts a um, uh, embossed area, like, like random shape circles around it. I kind of like that. So then we are going to add this, but let's let's pop this up on here. I grab my my mini dimensionals here. I don't know that I really meant that, but they'll work if I can get them off my fingers. And I did pull out some classic matte dots. And I wasn't sure whether I was going to use the black ones or the white ones. So these dots come in white, vanilla, one of the grays, I'm not sure which, and then black. Now, should we put them white ones around the outside or some black ones on the um the greeting itself hmm maybe both kind of fun and then we will just add a little adhesive to our belly band and pop this on here so here is our completed card and then when the recipient takes the belly band off and opens it up you'll have some fun um, little gift in here maybe a little chocolate treat or Maybe a gift card for, for a coffee or something. So I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, I will have the link below for the measurements. And I will change that measurement on my blog that I had wrong in here. Something always goes wrong, right? So I hope you have a great day. And thanks for stopping by at the Roost.